are you going, you guys? Thanks for clicking on this. And if you thought my bloody voice was bad in the last episode, the first inaugural one, <laughs> I'm so I'm so keen to use the word inaugural as often as possible. But um, yes, if you thought my voice was bad in the last one, then you know you are in for a treat because I am just going so south. January is the worst month of the whole year. I think we can all agree. My headband has just fallen on the floor, but that's fine. You guys can't see me, which is just a favour to you at the moment because I am just such a mess. You know, I've been taking... What have I not been taking? I've been... My friend Megan's introduced me to a new herbal tea that I like to have of an evening. It's called Snore in Peace. And it's a sort of lavender infusion, which sounds disgusting. Like, who wants to drink lavender? That smells like, you know, grandma's vag. But it's it's really nice, and it knocks you right out. There's other stuff in there, too. I've got a cup of, um, of jasmine tea at the moment. I'm just going to have a quick sip here. That's fine. I bet that set off a few people's ASMR. But, you know, jasmine green tea is usually my fave, but I've, I've I've been introduced to this new one, and I would recommend it. It's I think it's it's not Twinings. What's the brand? The Clipper. It's the Clipper. Is that Clipper tea? Have I made that up? I don't know. But I've been drinking that. I've got... I, I like to put vapor rub on my chest, and it's nothing too extreme, you know. It's just a light flu, a seasonal sort of thing. I think everyone has it in January. You just end up... You wake up and you can't breathe, you know. So there's that. And my throat's always sore. I've, so I've, I've had vapor rub on my chest. I've had my special tea. I've had a, a decongestant nasal spray. I've had two, actually, two different ones. One's a lot better than the other one. Um, you want the vapor rub type one. That's the really hardcore one. Um, oh, God, what, have I, what else have I had? Like an anti-flu sort of pill. I don't even know what that. what's in that one. Caffeine and some other shit. And I've been sucking on these sweets. Now, they're the ones, they're the black ones. Um, generally speaking, the general consensus is that, is that they are absolutely disgusting. They're called Jakemans, and I think... I don't know what Fisherman's Friend is. It's probably the same thing. In my mind, it's the same thing. They're like these black sweets, and they're very sort of like licorice or... Is it aniseed? Is that the same thing? I've just remembered. I offered someone some licorice all sorts the other day, and I never gave them to them. That's so embarrassing. I'm looking at them right now in my room. That's that's so bad. I got these for Christmas, and I don't really care for licorice all sorts. So if that person's listening to me, then great. Um, yes, but I, I did offer them to someone, and I never brought them downstairs. So that's awkward. Never mind. Apparently, no one, no one's getting any licorice all sorts. Um, so anyway, that's that. You know, illness out of the way. January is shite, and you know, let's go forward with a few topics now. I I just like to just extend the olive branch, if that's even a phrase. To everyone who listened to the first podcast and, you know, enjoyed it. Because I enjoyed making it. Um, I think it got a great reaction. Um, I'm glad that everyone is was, you know, interested in those topics. The cults and, you know, I, I actually... I'm going to go through the comments on the YouTube video um, later on in the podcast. I'll get to some of the comments. And that's going to be the same going forward. If you would like to ask me a question or... You know, just leave a little a little comment. If it's a hate comment, that's also fine. Just leave it down below and I might get to it at some point. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna do that later on. But what I have done is I've got Nova's phone here. If I can try and unlock it. You know these new bloody um I don't know the new iPhones. Um when you try and fucking unlock them and you can't you have to wait for your thumb to fail. You have to wait for the bloody thumbprint recognition to fail just so you can type your passcode in. And sometimes I'm just like, oh, you know what? I don't care about the thumbprint. I just want to get into the phone. And you can't, you, it, it doesn't let you type it in. It, it wants you to try and use the thumbprint, but that's bullshit. Oh, right. So I've got a load of topics here. Um, I've just seen in Nova's phone, she's got a hell of a lot of pictures of herself. And she just, she did a, a new, a wig the other day. She combined two hairs together. It's the same hair, but she just sort of, sewed she cut one up and sewed it into the other one so there came some giant and she looked so much like caitlin jenner it, you know very <laughs> very sort of oh you hear how my voice is getting croaky um you know big i thought she like a country singer the whole night she had this top on with like glittery stars on it she looks so much like is anyone seen that movie country strong i feel like is that gwyneth paltrow 
I don't remember. All I know is country singers, big hair, bad fashion, that's fine. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, you know, this will be my apology for the voice. It's going to go south and south. Maybe just one more sip. I don't want to be rude and sip, you know, in front of you. But that's nice. So, my, the first topic of this one, I just, I, I need to get to this because every time, you know, something like this comes into my life, I find it just, it frustrates me no end. And I think this is a, a very um, important thing to take into account, you know, especially if you've got kids or you you know stupid people, you're friends with stupid people, because this might seem like a small thing, but I think in, you know, the greater ether, it actually, everything, it's all connected. It's all one great big thing. And that's, that's people who, you know, don't understand how to intelligently interact with the internet. And by that, I mean, I mean, everything from, you know, little tiny things, um, where you might click on, um, well, it's called clickbait. You might click on one of those websites and, oh, you know who the guy is? I'll tell you what his name is. It's uh, Rick. Oh, what's his name? Rick Lax. Okay, so here we go. Now, Rick Lax is someone who, I'm, I mean, God bless him. He must have made a hell of a lot of money. But he creates videos and, you know, puts himself out there as, I think, some sort of magician. Or it might be... Uh, what do, uh, I don't even know. It's it's a pseudo sort of magician. He creates these videos that get a lot of attention. They usually go viral because they are supposed to be, you know, these little these little tricks and stuff he does. But everything he does, you can basically boil down to, you know, basic algebra. It it's so old, like from the when the internet w- was a thing, you know, it's right at the beginning, like in the nineties or whatever. And you had websites like Funny Junk, you know, all those sort of really basic, basic bitch websites. And there would be something on there like, you know, oh, think of a country beginning with D and think of an animal beginning with E. I know you were thinking of Denmark and elephant. Oh my God. And people get so shocked. They're like, how the hell did you know that's what I was thinking of? My God. And people go absolutely wild for these these little sort of things, but no one really stops to even fucking think about it. Of course, you, you of course you pick Denmark. You're not going to pick Djibouti or the Dominican Republic. Obviously, you pick Denmark. That's just you know, it's statistics is what it is. It's very basic statistics. And elephant, fucking an animal beginning with an e. Well, no one thought of emu. Well, I thought of emu, and I look like a right asshole because everyone else thought of elephant. But it's stuff like that. He'll do a video and he'll be like, okay, so, you know, take a number, think of any number. And it, it's just going to be algebra because all of these, you know, equations that he throws out there, it always ends up being, you know, you'll all get the same number and he'll say, right, well, that corresponds to a letter in the alphabet. So think of that letter and then think of, like, say if it was H and he's like, okay, so think of, think of a tool like in the, in the household that you'll use beginning with this. I bet you were thinking of hammer. Of course everyone was thinking of hammer. What the what the fuck else are you going to think of? And people get so overexcited. Quick share, quick put it on Instagram, quick show everyone. This is just mind blowing. This guy's a genius. I mean, he is kind of a genius because he <laughs> took something so stupid and, you know, the masses just eat that shit up. And that's what I'm talking about. There used to be a commercial that they would run. Hang on, I'm just going to check. This is still recording. That's great. Perfect. I'd hate for you to miss any of this. It's all gold. They used to run a commercial. And this isn't quite the same thing, but it uh, this is going to go on for a few minutes. And it's all related, I think. It was on TV about 10 years ago. I don't know if they still run it. I don't know how many, you know... Oh, I don't know what the word is, versions of this commercial they used to play, but the one in, that sticks out in my mind, and it must have been some sort of, of board, I don't know who ran this commercial, but it was about being media smart. And I can remember at the time thinking this commercial was fucking weird. And it was like a hippo. It was like a it was like a, a video of a hippopotamus in someone's kitchen, like a little tiny baby hippo in someone's kitchen eating out of like a dog bowl or something. And it was like, 
this is a the miniature micro house hippopotamus, blah, 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 whatever it was. And at the end it said, obviously this is all bullshit, but you need to take into account that, that media sometimes is, is very, is sometimes there to trick you. You have to be smart about, I think Nova just sneezed. What was that sound? Anyway, you have to be smart about how you're consuming media because it's, it's out sometimes to get you. It was basically a way of saying beware of propaganda, I think. I'm not entirely sure. But I remember thinking this commercial was so weird. Like, who who doesn't know that that's fake? Like, who doesn't know that? It's obviously not real. But in this day and age, I've come to realise people don't get it. People do not understand. Oh, her phone's gone off as well. People do not understand that, you know, everything that you're fed through, you know, the social media, the internet, everything. It's not all genuine. It's all horseshit. There was a picture that was um, circulated. It's being circulated probably as we speak. And it was a piece of, um, it was an anti-LGBT sort of flyer that I don't know who created. It was some sort of very right-wing, probably a very, it was a Christian, I think, um, sort of, set up outfit that was circulating this anti-LGBT flyer and they had, they broke down, um, it said all of these things are sinful, they're not, it's not real, whatever it was, and they broke it down, um, like, a, what is it called when they put, you put letters down um, a column and then you have stuff going, you, what does it mean? What is it, how do you say it? Um, Jesus Christ, I can't remember what it is at all, but anyway, so they said L, lesbian, um, well, how does it go? LG? I can't remember. How embarrassing. It was like L, lesbian, G, gay, and B, obviously, f- for bisexual. Someone has has photoshopped this and it said black. So it said lesbian, gay, black, and transgender. And, and it said, you know, these things are evil. Oh, no, you know what it was? It was, it was, you are not born this way. That's what it said. It said, these four things, you are not born this way. And it circulated and... And the the sort of, you know, when there's a picture or a video and above it, there's a stupid sort of tagline, there's a strap line. Um, you know, when my video, our, our stupid um, addiction to um, furniture video went viral, one of the strap lines was like, do you have, um, do you have any emotional issues? Me, colon. And it's that clickbait, you know, to get people to watch stuff. And this one was like, oh my God, you... You can't even be um, born black these days. And it spurred up all of all of these comments, these people saying, oh my God, you're so, ra- oh, these organisations racist and it's this and it's that. And, and it, it would go on to just all the, you know how comment sections always end up talking about something completely, it's so dramatic, all of these, you know, it's it's there to churn up. Um, you know, this divisiveness and this hatred, that's why it's there. But if you took a second... If you took a fucking second to look at this picture, you would see that someone's just photoshopped it to say black. It wasn't even the same font, you know? And you go through thinking, oh, someone must have seen this. And you see the one, the one gem of a person saying, guys, read it. It's, it's photoshopped. But people don't want to see that, you know? And I think this is, this is this mindset that is, it's so easy to churn up the hatred and the fear. People are so easily um, led. People are suggestible. I think Einstein had it right that we're, it's a generation of idiots. That the, the, they, they don't question things. People don't question things anymore. That's the sad truth of it all, Puffins. I implore you, if you're listening to me, you know, next time you, you see something... Um, on the internet, if you see a Dipley or a, what are those bloody stupid assholes? What's the other one? Answers.com. And it says something like, shock horror, you'll never believe why, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio slapped this homeless woman. You'll, and then there'll be like a countdown. It'll be like 20 pictures of Leonardo DiCaprio slapping a homeless woman. Number 12 will just outrage you. People click on it. People click on it. And then they get annoyed that it's not the correct content they were looking for. Don't click on it. Do you know what you're doing? You're you're giving that that awful, vapid organisation, if you can even call it that, it's probably just like two dickheads in a cupboard. You're giving them money 
because you're you're clicking on them, you're giving them advertising revenue. You know, it's not right. The way we interact with social media, it's not everyone's out for themselves. Everyone's out for themselves. Let's let's all pick up a torch and go outside. We didn't get much in the way of, um, you know, uh, credit for our video. People just like to steal stuff, you know. And then you get you get sort of the people. I was, we we would message people. We would say, "Can you credit us? You've just stolen our video for your own channel." And that's fine if you want it on your channel. That's absolutely fine. Just give us a little bit of credit for it. We made that. We had to actually go about our business, you know, and create it and edit it and put it out there. And you're the... Oh, I just burped. Hang on. Is it going to be one of two? Yes, it was. And that's fine. Let's all be cool about it. There may have been a burp in the first podcast. I can't remember. But anyway... Let's let's move on to something a bit nicer, a nicer topic. I've got that off my chest. Bottom line, you know, if you're going to be interacting with the internet, if you've got children interacting with the internet, tell them to stop being stupid assholes. You know, maybe just think about things before you go into them. Like a marriage to Nova. I've thought about that long and hard, and that's why we've not gone into it. <laughs> Oh, love her. She's so cute. Okay, so, right. What other, what other topics have I got lined up? See, I'm trying to look on Nova's bloody phone. You've got to wait to unlock it. That's not right. That's not right at all. When I was at home over Christmas, it wasn't a brilliant Christmas. Uh, my father's not been very well. You know, my grandmother wasn't very well. Um, and it was just generally a bit shit. And... Um, my and a grandmother who was staying with me, I uh, I uh, just had one of those moments of it was just gold. You know when it's like a gift from God, and you know we were in the car going to this sort of fancy restaurant, and they were talking about sort of you know, I think it was our uh, who wants to be no what's that show oh, I'm a celebrity get me out of here, and she was like oh did you watch it she was talking to my mo- talking to my mother she was like did you watch it oh that guy was on there he was so great you know the one. Oh, you know that one guy? Oh, he was great. He was on EastEnders. You know him. Yes. He played the rapist. <laughs> I just love that. He said, oh, come on. You know the one. He played the rapist. Oh, he was a great rapist in that. Did you not see him in EastEnders? Oh, he played the rapist. Well, I've never heard the word rapist so many times shouted in my ear. Well, I mean, gladfully. Otherwise, you know, where would we be? Where would I be now? I mean, what a thing to... Even think about. Let's move on. The the thing that I do love about going home, which my parents live in London. They live in South London. Nova and I live on the south coast of England, the seaside. And my parents live in South London. It's a place called Croydon. It's not very nice. I grew up there, you know. Oh, look, there's tea here. Hang on a second, please. Who drinks jasmine tea i really would recommend it it almost is um it's very you know detoxifying it's very cleansing for you but it also like i like to drink it maybe at work if i'm feeling like a bit of a lull in my mood oh it just picks me right up it's great makes you feel all warm and fuzzy i liken it to when um people you know when you drink alcohol well i don't know what that's like just joking um that was a great joke well done try and keep up with me um, when you drink like wine or, you know, you, you're starting a pre-drink scenario, you're really getting into it and you know you feel that sort of warm. Me and my friend Megan always explain it as the warm feeling, like in your stomach, you know, when you get that sort of nice warm booze feeling like you're about to be drunk and you feel really excited. It's a bit like that, but it's it's nicer than that though. I mean, it's not nicer, but it's, you know, healthier. So the thing that I like about being um, in London is Uber. And we don't have, Nova and I don't have Uber where we are. Uber is, obviously it's an American company. I think it started, did it start in California? Oh, everything good's in California. Um, But it has migrated over here. I think it's migrated to several countries now, but in the UK, it's in Manchester, which is very north, London, I think Portsmouth, maybe... 
Birmingham. There's big cities, but it's not made its way here yet. I'm sure it will, and I cannot wait until it does. Um, because it's just the handiest fucking thing in the world. It was a bit frightening though, because I went to London, and um, the um, London Victoria train station was closed. This was just an evening. We went drunk bowling. I'll get to that. Who knew I was so good at bowling? We'll get to that. But as I was leaving, you know, um, the train station was closed. Not that I was going to use it anyway, because I always intended to get an Uber, because it's so cheap. It's so quick. It just, it pulls up right there next to you. It takes you home and it's great. But um, I had low battery. I'd ordered it. And I don't know if people, how many people use Uber or are aware of how it works. It's a great service. People whinge and moan it, that it's taking away from the black cabs and it takes away from small... It, I don't give a shit. They thought of, you know, a way of doing it and improving it. Those other people should be catching up, the black cabs. They're fucking so expensive. Why am I not going to pick the cheaper option? You know? You know what I mean? They should be lowering their rates. They should be getting, you know, on... They should be trying to meet Uber... If someone provides a service and someone provides a better service, you know, this is the whole Facebook argument. He took their their website and improved it. Well, I want the improved one, please. Anyway, so it, you order your cab. It sh- tells you how much it's going to be. It, it takes your money out of your account. And it, you can see on the map, you can see who's going to pick you up. You can see the reg the license plate of, of the car. And it's great. It pulls up right there. You know, you don't have to be at an address. It just comes to where you are on the map, which is so bloody handy. You just click it and there it is. You can you can choose like ex- executive cars and stuff. But, you know, I always go with a basic shitter. You don't need a limousine to get from A to B. Not all the bloody time. So this time, however, and I'd never had this before because being in Croydon, um, which is a fairly big town... But um, it's there's obviously not as many people using it, especially because I'm I, where my parents are. It's just outside of Croydon. It's very south. It's it's the suburbs. People aren't using it as much. But in London, central London, there were that many people using it for the first time ever. It gave me the option to use Uber Pool, which I had never experienced before. But basically, Uber Pool is where you can um, share some of your journey home with a stranger. Which is, you know, on the one hand, it's a great idea because you split the fare. I think so much as, you know, you go a certain amount of the way, you'll pay that much of of your journey and the other person will pay the rest. It saves on, you know, gas and it just saves on everything. It's a very economic way of doing it. And it, it gave me the option of doing it. I was going from London, Victoria to Croydon. There was a lady on my thing called Naomi. And I just, I love that I'm going to tell this story because I think of Naomi all the time. If you're listening, Naomi, you were a dull dud, but that's fine. You know, it doesn't say you're going to be sharing a car with an absolute winner who's fun at parties. So I I got the... um. I got the app open, I clicked Uber Paul, and I was a bit scared actually, I was terrified because I had like 2% battery left, and I thought, it's gone through, but if I, I it, there's a lot of road works happening outside London, Victoria at the moment, and so I couldn't get the, ca- the car to come exactly to where I was, I had to go around somewhere, a separate road, there's a lot of swallowing happening here, I'm, I do apologise, but uh, maybe if I whisper that's better, no that's ASMR, I'll, I'll stop right, right there. Um, So I had to find where I was. Now, in London, finding road names isn't the easiest thing in the world because they're tiny little, um, like, road signs, you know, all the way up on the side of these buildings. And especially outside London, Victoria, it's it's tricky to find where you are. And I was quite drunk as well, so there's that. So I was shit scared of missing it. But the other thing is, not only do you have to, did I have to move slightly because of where I was, but the Uber pool moves your location anyway, because they, they expect you to meet them a little bit of the way, obviously not far, because you still have to get a taxi, but you might have to walk several roads away, just so it's convenient for the person in the cab already 
to not have to, to take a massive diversion to come and get you. But there was this bird called Naomi. And she was in the car and I got in and I was sort of going to be like, hey, girlfriend, this is new for me. Have you done this before? You ever shared a car? Like, do you come here often? Sort of thing. But I swear to God, I got in. She gave me the filthiest look. She must have been, she can't have been more than early 30s. She was so sort of posh totty. I couldn't get over it. The way she spoke, she sounded like, um, do you guys know, um, oh, who's the name of that, that violinist that went on Britain's Got Talent and she just, oh God, you know, like, like, oh, keeping up with the, the fucking Fulfords, you know, when, when people are so posh, you just want to like smack them around the face because it's so unappealing. Um, she was like that. And I just remember thinking, you know, I think she was a fairly nice looking girl, but you just know the sort, like bad at parties, really fucking bad, a bit like Nova. And I just remember thinking like, uh, it's really awkward. She didn't make any effort to sort of even acknowledge me. She, like, her body language was so awkward. She just leaned towards the door, sort of essentially sticking her ass up. I mean, maybe she was presenting. But um, I, it was just so fucking awkward. Like, I felt like I should molest her just to break the tension. No, I'm just joking. That's my point, though. I mean, it's great. And you are going on record... Um, as having been in the car with this person, you have your bank account, your details stored with Uber, because you have the app, it's all very personal to you. And they know who you are, but you are essentially agreeing, if you are, you know, a, a, a young lady, let's say, you're agreeing to sharing the back seat of a car at 3am in the middle of London with an absolute stranger. Now, Yes, like what I've said, they will have all of your details there. But I'm sure some people don't give a shit about, you know, obviously about, you know, being caught. So it's a bit tricky, that one. Oh, my goodness. I need to blow my nose. Please. Oh, oh my God. Bear with. Just sorted myself out. I paused it and then I've carried on. It's the the miracle, the magic of modern technology. It was like I didn't go anywhere. That's fine. I sound so much better now. So, you know, I miss, I bloody miss Naomi. If you're listening to this, Naomi, then you were a shit ride. I wouldn't go with you again. I was looking for shits and giggles. I thought it'd be really fun. I was about to be my new best friend. Didn't work out that way. Fascinating, though, that you can do that. I do think Uber is is fascinating. I wish we had it here, but we don't. You know what else I've come to be fascinated with? (laughs) Is I like that movie, The Devil Wears Prada. Do people like the movie, The Devil Wears Prada? The only thing I don't like about that movie is Anne Hathaway. You might argue she is the lead character, the lead actress. Um, However, that... I I don't think that really matters. It's basically a, a vehicle... For Meryl Streep, anyway, that movie. Um, It's all about Meryl. Oh, we should talk about Meryl in a minute. God, she's great. Wouldn't she just be the ideal dinner party guest? You'd never be stuck for something to say, would you? Um, I would. She probably wouldn't. I don't know. Maybe she's quite... She's intelligent. Anyway, um, she's the best thing about that movie. And I... My favourite thing... (laughs) about the Devil Wears Prada is any time and brace yourselves for this because I guarantee you're going to be doing it for the rest of the week. We want to invite you to sit with us for the rest of the week. No, that's a different movie. Is any time that her character... What's what's Meryl Streep's character called in that movie? Uh, Miranda... Who's Miranda Hart? Oh, that's that fucking awful British comedian. I can't stand her. Miranda something. Oh, I can't believe I can't remember. But basically, it's any time she says, Jacqueline Follier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just love that so much. I've just been saying it. Any time I get an excuse, I'll be on my own. I'll just go, mm, my esteemed colleague, Jacqueline Follier. It's just so great. What an awful... She was a right bitch in that movie, wasn't she? Was she? Oh, I can't remember even who Jacqueline Fourier... Jacqueline Fourier. Can't remember who she was. <laughs> I think I'm going a bit delirious. Mira- was her name Miranda? 
Yes. And she was the editor in chief of Runway. Um oh god, I can't remember anyone's bloody name. Oh, Emily Blunt. She was great in that as well. She was great in that. That really is a a, a great movie. It's a chick flick, it's a popcorn, one of those popcorny type movies. But I basically like watching it just for that one scene. Well, obviously when whenever she says Jacqueline Fully. And also when, um, you know, she scoffs at them when they're sorting out which belts to wear with that outfit. And, you know, um, um, Anne Hathaway, Amanda Hathaway? Anne Hathaway starts, like, laughing at them. And she says something like, um, oh, you don't think this has anything to do with you? Well, I see, when you went to pick out that that cardigan, whatever, what you think is uh, blue, but it's cerulean. And, and someone did a collection of cerulean... Military jackets was it John Paul Gaultier, wasn't it? Who, who did that? And uh, she says something like, "You're so blithely unaware of the fact that that outfit was picked for you by the very people in this room." Oh my God! It's just one of those moments where she just fucking nailed it. She nailed that bitch to the floor. Who doesn't want to be, uh, you know, in a position to smack someone down with the phrase "You're blithely unaware"? I'll tell you who doesn't: Jacqueline Follier. <laughs> I hate myself. I'm so sorry. Um, so, okay. Uh, I'll get to um, the uh, the comments of the previous podcast in just a moment. Um, another topic that I just wanted to bring up real quick is... It's, it's a weird one. And it's something that I think of from time to time. And I don't really know why. I think it's because I have a... Fa- okay, here it is. Here's the thing. I have a fascination with people who are successful and people who are wildly um, popular, but you can't really pinpoint why. And not like a Kim Kardashian, who's obviously very successful and stuff, because she's attractive and she likes, she got her tits out and she was in... It's obvious why she's why she's successful. I'm talking about, like, steps. Like, why the fuck were they successful? Not one of them could sing. Well, maybe Claire could. Not one of them could sing. Not one of them could dance. They're just, they're just very basic. I watched that Steps reunion video uh, series that was on Sky One or whatever, TV show. Just not interesting people. That guy, what is his name? H, who was... um. Do you guys, are you guys aware of the band Steps? Okay, well, basically, the topic I was going to get to, I'll get to in a minute. But let's take a second to talk about Steps. They were a British band in the 90s. They were very, it was cheesy, naff, you know, awful. They just basically did covers. They did covers of that song Chain Reaction and Tragedy. They just took good songs and then kind of made them camp and poppy, more camp and poppy than they were originally. But they um, they had a bit of a, an awkward ending to them because for some reason Claire, who was the 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 main singer of the group, like the like the Nicole Scherzinger of the group, um, broke away, along with this guy H, who is an absolute fucking asshole. This guy has just got no backbone at all. Uh, he's the blonde one, the really, oh, the faggy blonde one. He's just awful. And they left this this group, which consisted of those two. There was one other guy called, I think his name's Paul. Straight, you know, okay, fairly good looking. I'm sure he had a, a, a good physique, but bland as fucking ass. Bland, nothing about him at all. And then the other girls were, there was one called Faye who had dreadlocks, I think that was her thing, and the brunette one is Lisa Scott Lee, who again was just, you know, as mediocre as all get, I mean, you can't even make it up, so these kids were put into this band, not like the Spice Girls, who at least were, they were mediocre singers, of course they were, but they were interesting, they had personalities, and may I guess it's a similar sort of idea because they were also sort of all a bit shit. But anyway, in steps, Claire and H, uh, and you find this out in this um, bloody show. What was it called? The Steps Reunion Show. Because they tried to reunite, I think, for five minutes, you know, a couple of years ago. You find out that that on the night 
of this great big performance they were doing. They were on tour. Was it Wembley? It was a big thing. Just before they go out, Claire and H just just handed these notes like fucking school kids. They handed these these letters, they said, but I think it was like a, a couple of lines on a piece of paper. Handed them out to the group and basically it was like, oh, we're just going to go. Fuck you guys. We're just going to leave. And that was it. So these people had to go on and do this massive show knowing that the two people had just left them high and dry at the height of their of their popularity, which is just, you know, why they're popular, no one knows. So though and then there are they're assholes for doing that. So when they reunited in this awkward, you know, dining room scenario, they were like, Why did you bloody do that? Why did you just leave us in the most spineless, like cowardly way? And they were like, oh, we were just so tired. Like, oh, we were so done with it. We couldn't go on anymore. And then they, one of the others was like, well, that's bullshit. Because you two just banded up together and fucking release an awful song on your own. Which didn't go anywhere. I'll tell you why. They left. Claire left because she was the only one who had any bloody talent. And she didn't need the, other, the others. She was a good singer. She went on that opera show where a whole bunch of, like, washed up singers tried to do opera for five minutes. I, I don't know. She was good. She's got a good voice. So she left to to do that. And H left because he's a fucking, you know, spineless douchebag. So he just latched on to the most talented one. And that's why he, he, he saw his meal ticket and he went. So they were like, you didn't bloody leave because you were tired. You left because you just fucking wanted the attention yourselves and you, you douchebags. Anyway, they tried to reunite. And what did they do a cover of? Oh, it was an ABBA song. I mean, I just don't know why you would cover an ABBA song like or a Michael Jackson song. It's just so redundant. But anyway, my point was, these people, at, you know, they're, they're, they hit the stratosphere and they become worldwide. I mean, these kids, um, they I think they opened for Britney Spears. Did they support Britney Spears? Why did they do... Why was anyone taking them seriously? I don't know. Nova went to see them in concert not long ago because she's an asshole. It's like S Club 7. I mean, I don't know that these people are great. Are bands really great? It, are they not just bands because these five people are sort of semi-talented but could never make it on their own? Put them into a band together because what you don't have in talent you can make up for in volume. Is that what it is? God. Okay, let's name all the bands that are shit when you really break it down. The Spice Girls. I mean, Jerry had something about her on her own. Obviously, Victoria Beckham did. But but Victoria Beckham, not in the musical arena. Okay, she did. She had some hits. I liked Victoria Beckham's music. But it was bad, you know. Mel B. Again, in, she's in entertainment, but not really a singer. Mel C, actually. Mel C was is a great singer. She has a very distinctive voice. It's not incredible, but it was by far the best one. Powerful. And she's actually... She still makes music today. It's very sort of, you know... So you, you go into a WH Smith and you might hear it playing. It's not great, but she writes music. So she actually has some, you know, musical talent. Which one have I missed out? Emma Bunton. Emma Bunton is one of the worst actresses to ever grace the small or large screen. And that's it. Is that all of them? That's five, isn't it? Yes. So collectively, they were a great image. You know, what they were selling was a, a sort of, you know, a phenomenon. It was girl power. So they are sort of smart in that respect. You can give the Spice Girls a free pass. Because just visually, the the names and the characters and, and stuff. And their music was good, wasn't it? It was great, you know shit but it was great so but shit is i'm talking about like steps were shit s club seven who was the good singer in s club seven the racist one anyway moving on um i thought of another one then in my head and i can't remember i can't remember what it was shit bands who's a shitter english well a lot of english ones are well one direction they weren't well, One Direction, uh, 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 they weren't a band, were they? They were made up. They went on a talent show and they were they were p- 
pushed together, I think. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to get back to my original point, which was um, when I was on, when I was traveling to um, my parents' house for Christmas, I watched a biopic. It was called Scylla. It stars Sheridan Smith, and it's about Scylla Black. And it's about her, her when she was like a teenager, and she came up as a singer like with the Beatles. You know, with the Beatles. I mean, come on. I, just as a side note, can't stand the Beatles. I think maybe it must just be a generational thing. I do not like a single Beatles song. To me, they make me feel very depressed. It's just dirge. I think it's absolute dirge. I can't be doing with it. I really can't stand the Beatles. And I don't give a shit. You can tell me all you want about, you know, oh, you have to respect what they did for music. Oh, that's fine. That's okay. Listen, I've got time for a Beatles documentary. I've got time for, you know, to listen to whatever. You know, Yoko Ono, I find her fascinating. You know, I imagine she's got a very large beaver. But I don't care for the music. Never will. I think it's absolute dirge. But, you know, obviously you can't question the massive phenomenon of the Beatles. They were Beatles mania. That's what it was. It was everywhere. And Scylla Black came up with them. Okay, so this is the story here. Do people know who Scylla Black is? If you're from the UK, you will know who Scylla Black is. She was a singer in the 60s. If you're from the States, I imagine... Whenever Nova and I check out our um, analytics on our channel, I think we have some listeners, you know, well, we have listeners from around the world, we know that, but if you're from the States, as I think a lot of our listeners are, you might not know who Scylla Black is, so leave a comment below, do you know who she is, have you ever heard of her? Um, She tried to, can you hear me playing with the radiator, I do apologise if that's, you know, irritating for you. Um. So Scylla, yes. Um, if you're from the UK, you'll know who she is, not necessarily because she was a singer that was very well known. She had some number ones in the 60s. But you'll know her because she eventually ended up presenting um, TV shows. She presented, most famously, Blind Date, which I don't know where that show originated from. I'm guessing it was an American show and we just stole it. But it was like, what the fuck even was Blind Date? Okay, so they have three people sitting on stools and they were separated by a really ugly like giant tri- a, a heart shaped like triangular door thing that would like embarrassingly slide up and down and there was one person in the, and she would be like um, and she was from Liverpool and she had a very weird voice and she would just be like contestant number one oh my god that was the best till a black impersonation anyone's ever heard so the person would sit on this one side and they would have to ask questions to the other three people. And depending on w- their answers, if if they liked them, they would go on a blind date somewhere in a, like an like, exotic location. They would always hate the other person. I don't think anything good ever came from that. Show me one couple that ever got married from blind date. Anyway, it was great TV. It was like prime time, eight o'clock. You know when, like, light entertainment was just in its prime? Like, Noel's house party. Do people remember that? Like, I'm talking British stuff here. You know, changing rooms. Who wants to be a millionaire? You'd all get round about eight o'clock. And you'd all sit round as a family and watch this shit. It was shit. Blind date was shit. But everyone loved it. Okay, let's try another Scylla impersonation. What would she say? Oh, and the the guy who, the big voice in the sky, the pie in the sky, it was called Graham, and she would say, like, Lindsay's going to the Maldives, so tell us all about it, Graham. <laughs> well, it sounded like she was dying then, and she wasn't dying. I mean, she did die eventually. She is dead. But my point is, this woman was... Uh, a a massive success. Looking back, why? She did not have an amazing voice. Maybe in the 60s in Liverpool, it didn't take much to be a great singer. But she was huge, you know. She was with Brian Epstein, who he signed all these great, great big artists. But looking back, Scylla, 
I mean, what was the appeal of Scylla? Can someone tell me? She had some great songs, don't get me wrong. Um, But again, that were they not just both... Uh, the, her, her number ones, they were both covers. So really, I don't know the appeal of Scylla. She had great big teeth. She wasn't... She was like a, a good like TV host. She was no Davina, let's put it that way. I think Davina's a lot better on television than Scylla was. She was nice, but she was just a redhead with big teeth. Do people of of maybe a generation or two below me, are they even aware that she was a singer? Do people even still remember her? Actually, she died a couple of years ago. It was really fucking sad, actually, because, I mean, I quite like Scylla, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I do, I did like, I kind of liked her. I liked some of her songs. But the way she died was absolutely tragic because she was on holiday in a holiday home and she just, like, was on her own and she fell over and hit her head, a la um, Natasha Richardson, you know? And that was it. It doesn't take much. You just knock your head in the right place and that's it. It's so tragic, it really is. But she was, I think she was great friends with Rolf Harris. And that's a whole other conversation for another time. Do you guys, you know anything about Rolf Harris? Well, you know, he's in jail. And we'll leave it at that. So I think at this point it would be a great time for me to get to some comments. So let's have a look at last week's. I'm just going to move around. Oh, my tea's still here. You guys don't mind. Are we still going? Just going to double check. Perfect. Right. So, let's go on on to... Okay, here we go. So, I'm going to go through these and we'll just see what's what. So, my last um, podcast was about cults. And there's a lot of love in this one. I think it's great. The world hates Jim. I have a reason to live now. Thank you so much. I put... Oh, my God. Thanks, Sarah Paulson. Your, your picture there is of Sarah Paulson, funnily enough. Um, Nick the Fame Monster says, would it be possible to put this on SoundCloud or the Apple Podcasts app? I think maybe I can put it on the Apple Podcasts app. Um, I have a feeling some of our I Think It Could Be Beefs are on the Apple Podcast thingy-jiggy. Um, SoundCloud is expensive, I think. So probably not SoundCloud, but I will ask Nova about the Apple Podcast app because I would like it to be on there too. That's great. Shinier, 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 XOX. Who needs to go to school when Olympia teaches me more about the world? My teachers couldn't hear. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. I can't teach you shit. Well, maybe I can. I don't know. Listen to what I'm saying about clicking on stuff. Just, you know, soaking it in. Because if you can if you can have your fear stirred up, that's how, that's, you know, how people get people to be fearful of, you know, Islam, stuff like that. It doesn't take much to stir up fear. And look where we are now. Donald Trump is going to be president. Okay. Did you know... This is by... Ant- oh, your name's in Greek. Antonis. Did you know there is a country called Burkina Faso? Well, I knew about that. What about Ombom... I don't know if... I mean, well, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Eclectic Diaries. I recognise your profile picture. I think I have you on Facebook. You're so cute with your glasses. Oh, my God, you did it. I'm crying. Well, don't cry. This is supposed to be a friendly podcast. Jesus Christ. Bloody Twins. Can you and Nova do a review of the OA when you finish it? I'm interested to see what you think. Me and my friends have pretty differing opinions. Um, Bloody Twins. We are actually... uh, We've done an OA um, review. It's going to be up... uh, If this podcast is up, I don't know, on Tuesday maybe, um, then the end of the week hopefully will be the OA review. Me and Nova just loved it. We really loved it. And I wasn't sure about the main chick to begin with. There were a few sort of early hits and misses for me. But overall, by the end, yes, we loved it. So wait um, patiently for that and it will be there. Um, Let's see, Violet Evans. This gave me life. Great, cute. Thank you so much. Magnifique. Olympique. Well, that's Antonis getting in a second comment. You know, that's greedy, Antonis. What can I say? Um... Izzy B, love this so much. Thank you, guy. I'm in park. Loved every second. God damn it, you're so cute. Um, Winter fucking rose. What's winter fucking rose? 
love you so damn much, count me in. That must be in reference to the um, Novimpia cult. If you subscribe, you can join the Novimpia cult and become an asshole. Eclectic, holy shit, this is amazing. Thank you so much. I thought so too. Ryder says, I didn't notice Michelle talks too much until you pointed it out. That's in reference to the bloody um, What's the Tea podcast. I think Michelle does speak too much, actually, but that's fine. Um, Sup, Sluck. Well, what does that mean? This is my guilty pleasure. Don't be guilty about it. Shout it from the rooftops. Um, My shadow self. I'm all in for the cult. I love KFC and documentaries. Lol, please do more of these. I just love lol. I think lol will go down in history as being one of the most ridiculous components of of internet culture. That people just walk around saying lol doesn't make any sense. And when people say it, they rarely are lolling anyway. But thank you, Shadow Self. That's great. Nova and I were going to have KFC last night. We we didn't in the end. We went for pizza, but, you know, still, that's fine. Um, um, let's see. I think it might be beef. It's still going to be a thing. This is not going to be replacing. I think it might be beef. Nova just never wants to do them. Um, so I am going to just do this on my own, as I am. She can suck a dick. I'm just joking. Um, no, Vimpia's was home race sounds amazing. I don't think you've quite grasped what I was trying to suggest. I think you meant to put asshole race. Um, no, Vimpia's asshole race, which I mentioned in the last one, is maybe an online competition that we want to do where it's like a drag race, but it's just shit and it's for like... You know, your cactus. If you want to, if you want to submit your cat, that's fine. We might do that. I don't know. Thomas Wilderman, will you do more of these? Yes, I'm doing one right now. Rasan, love your new podcast. Cheers. I like your red t-shirt. Wait, Jamie, I would definitely... Jamie Ivel would definitely love to join your cult. Just a normal 13-year-old here. Well, I feel like 13 is a great age to get on board because we are crafting young minds... And I think you could do far worse. You'd be better off joining our bloody channel. Because I think I'm very upfront. We're very upfront. We don't bullshit. You'd be better off joining us than you would someone like... Oh, who's awful? That blonde chick. What's that beastly blonde bird called? And Nova watches her. Oh, God, can't stand her. Okay, Cole L. Novempia asshole race would be great. You can sign right up. Just going forward, by the way, I'm going to read every comment from the first podcast because I'm already sort of halfway through. There weren't many. If there's going to be loads going forward, I will just cut out the best ones. So make it a good comment, please. Um, Courtney Coburn, thank you for this. It's 1am in New Zealand. I'm sacrificing sleep to listen to this. That just brings me life. Courtney, thank you so much. Um, And C. Williams has loved it. Great quality with your phone. Looking forward to more of your podcasts. Merry Christmas. Um, yes, I'm glad I'm doing this on the phone. Not like whatever the hell Nova did to begin with. That bloody microphone never worked. Scott Gwynn says that I should re- record me. You should video record you making these. No, I'm not doing that. I can't. I look dreadful. Do you know I look so dreadful? And I, you know, imagine if I sound like this. Imagine what I bloody look like. Um, Natalie, can't believe you mentioned Dreams of a Life, one of my favourite documentaries. Yes, um, Dreams of a Life is a great documentary. It's on Netflix. I do recommend you watch it. It's fascinating. I love weird documentaries, like creepy weird ones. I don't know if I mentioned it in the last podcast, but one of my favourite documentaries is the one about the Toynbee Tiles. Um, which is some weird dude who cuts out like these lino tiles with with weird cryptic messages in and he sort of puts them into pavements and sidewalks around America. It's fascinating. I don't know if I spoke about that. If I spoke about that, I'm sorry for repeating myself. If not, you should get on it. I think it's called Resurrect Jupiter is the name of the documentary. That's a great one. So thanks, Natalie. That's one of my favourites too. There's, I think someone left a comment. Let me see. Just while we're talking about dreams of a life, someone left a comment about it. Here we go. Archie Kerr. Joyce's family did look for her. Apparently her sisters tried to look for her and hired a private investigator to find her, but they couldn't. Also, her family tried writing letters to her, but they... But because there was no response, she thought she broke... They thought she broke off ties with them. Yes, I do remember that they said that in the documentary. If you don't remember, Dreams of a Life is a documentary about the lady who died in her apartment in front of the TV. And she wasn't discovered for three years. She was just found. And the TV was still on. She was just there dead in front of the TV. And it's all about these people, 
you know, talking about her, that knew her, and how someone could possibly die on their own. Um, but I don't know. Yes, okay, apparently they said they said they tried to look for her. How much of that is actually true? They hired a private investigator to find her, but they couldn't. I feel like that's a pretty shitty private investigator because she used her real name. Um, she didn't change her name. She didn't live in some remote location. She was there. Um, I don't really know how much of that I believe... I think if you can't find where someone's been living for three years, it you know, it's not that hard. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Um, but thank you for reminding me about that, because I'd forgotten that they, they said they tried to look for her. It's just such a sad situation. But anyway, um, moving on. Um, Harada, no, I'm not going to put it on SoundCloud. I, I don't want to have to pay for it. <laughs> I will try and put it on the Apple one, though. I forgot the Apple one was a thing. I might be doing that. Um, holy shit. Oh eight, oh eight. I love this. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. I love having you guys hear it for this experience. It means the world to me. Um, Kelly Alexandra, this transitioned me from Christmas Eve to Christmas in Australia. Oh, you know, me too. Uh, I just like to imagine right now that I'm sort of talking to you, my friends, over a cup of Jerram Fountain Lakes. Um... Let's see, Jacob Michael, Olympia's asshole race, start your engines. May the best shitter win. Okay. Well, listen, if you want to make us a nice theme tune, I would not stop you. However, we probably can't monetize it because I'm sure RuPaul would sue us because RuPaul is as tight as a gnat's ass. Okay. Joshua Thomas, on the topic of spooky programs about People being dead or kidnapped, you should check out What Remains and 13. Wait, are they TV shows? Spooky programs, people being dead? Oh, I don't know what they are, but I'm going to look at that. What Remains sounds hideous. I love that. Okay, thank you for those recommendations. Has anyone else seen those? Tom Hendy, I'd be up for an Olympia cult. Not sure I'd be up for living in Bournemouth, though. <laughs> yes, uh, I wouldn't live here if if I could... So I guess I've just answered my own question about moving. Okay, great. Matthew Lawrence, this honestly was so fantastic. Gripped the whole way through. So interesting and funny. Oh, Bashar. I love the tangents and anecdotal side notes. Well, I'm glad that you like them because I can't not do that. I've got a serious case of of the moving on to other, talking about other stuff. Remember when I tried to talk about Scylla, I ended up talking about steps. I mean, what what is the relevance with that? No one knows. Uh, Kylie Terra says, lol, oh my god, you can't seriously compare Jesus to a cult founder when, like, all he was trying to do is instill worthwhile values into culture. Meanwhile, legit cult members bring absolutely nothing positive to society or culture. My point about cult leaders and, and Jesus comparing Jesus to a cult leader, potentially, wasn't that I was necessarily comparing them, but my point was... You're saying that Jesus was trying to... All he was trying to do is instill worthwhile values into culture. Well, would a cult follower not say exactly the same thing about their cult leader? Would, if Jesus were to come back, you know, for a second coming... And this is all my... I'm not saying this is the way it is. It's just something interesting to think about. If there was a second coming of Christ, as I think I'm told they're supposed to be, if so, if he actually genuinely came back, who the fuck would believe him? He could walk into the middle of Times Square, I'm Jesus Christ. He'd get sectioned. No one would believe him. My point being that nowadays we are a bit more you know, observant. We understand that people are narcissists. We understand that people are kind of a bit crazy in the membranes. So my point was that that is a potential theory that I think is interesting to think about how if it was true, if Jesus was merely some sort of narcissist, that it's fascinating that, you know, I was walking down the high street going to buy someone a present in his name when it happened 20 or 2,000 years ago. It's just a fascinating thing to think about. But no, obviously, I'm not out to um, offend anyone's beliefs. I just think it's something that's interesting to discuss. Kylie, um, so that's that. Jordan John, you should totally watch Don't Trust the Bitch in Apartment 23. People have told me that before. I know it's on Netflix, but I feel like this. If something had its had a shot and then got cancelled before it wanted to, I feel like I shouldn't watch it because it it will not leave me feeling fulfilled. 
that TV show Sugar Rush got cancelled and it had so much life in it and it makes me so sad. Brothers and sisters, I mean, don't even get me started. That was my favourite show and they, they cut it off. I hated that. And so I don't really know if I should invest in something which, if it was supposed to be that short, that's fine. But I don't know. I will potentially look at it. But thank you for mentioning that, Jordan John. Camilla, I'm going to say Bastov, Bastow, I don't know. ASOS, my fucking life, to be honest. Also, am I the only one that wants you guys to do a whole series of issues talking about conspiracy theories and creepy shit? I would love that, Camilla. I would love that, but I am the sort of person that would be up, you know, 2am researching, like like I said last time, the doctor that that kept the patient, the dead girl. He was fell in love with her. What was his name? Eric Tansler. So he covered her in like pa- like um, plaster of Paris or like paper mache or whatever to try and preserve her. You know, I'll be reading about that 2am. So I am... I'm full of that kind of weird knowledge that I don't think Nova would really appreciate. So I don't know if she'd be on board, but if you guys want me to do another podcast episode about creepy shit, I would be so down for that. Um, And she also says that if you actually do the race, there's no way I'm not entering my cat. Oh, yes. Well done, Camilla. Well done. Ryder, great podcast. Thank you so much. Josh Newman, I love, I love this. More of these, please. Trey, there's nothing I will look forward to more than this podcast. And yes, I'm including the birth of my first child. Well, I think I've just birthed something now because I'm so ill. But that that was such a, a gorgeous slew of comments. I really appreciate all of, of those comments, guys. Thank you for putting them down there. You are all going to be the first inductees into the Novimpia cult. And you're all assholes. And I love it. So, um, thank you for joining me for this episode of Full of Shit. Full of it, full of shit. Um, and, you know, why don't you just follow me on social media? You know, I'm on Instagram. It's Olympia underscore Avalanche. And I'm on Twitter. Er, oh, hi, Olympia. Hi, has got two eyes. And also, yes, we have an Olympia Facebook page. Don't forget to, to like that. Um, I think that's probably everything. Thanks for coming, you guys. I'm going to go die now. All right, cheerio then. Bye.